I asked Bulama Bukachi, an international human rights and security analyst, how significant these surrenders are and if this is an opportunity to break Boko Haram's stronghold in West Africa. We should understand that it is uh, the escalation of the group's internal warfare, um, pressure from the military in Nigeria and Cameroon, Niger and Chad, but also hunger and reported diseases in the uh, self-styled caliphate that is leading to these defections. But it is also important for us to note that most of those defecting are not fighters. They are ordinary civilians called a worm in the Arabic language or in the Iswab Caliphate that cannot continue to live in the Caliphate because of lack of security and, uh, and, and lack of food that are defecting. So it is not fighters that are defecting uh, right now. It doesn't look that way to the victims and the survivors, especially because they then get rehabilitated. They get put on a stipend. And the same respect is not accorded the victims and the survivors. Yeah, and I think that's fair. Uh, even though most of these people are not fighters, there are some who are, who are fighters. But even if they are, I mean, uh, even the ordinary civilians, these are people who agreed with Boko Haram's uh, interpretation of Islam, and they migrated from Nigeria or Niger, Cameroon or Chad to the group's caliphate. And so they are people who have bought into Boko Haram's ideology and are complicit in the killings. They have at least morally supported those fighters that have killed 35,000 people in the last 10 years and have led to the death of another 350,000 people, mostly children below the age of five. So they are complicit. They uh, have bought into Boko Haram's ideology, and so rehabilitation is important. Um, but then the problem, uh, the key challenge there is that the ultimate aim of rehabilitation, done not only by Cameroon, but also Nigeria and Niger, is to reintegrate these people back to communities. But the same communities that they have attacked, that they have devastated, are left in ruins. Lives and livelihoods they destroyed are left without being built. And then you want to take these criminals who are at least complicit in this destruction back to the same community, having rehabilitated them and economically empowered them. And that's what the victims see as unfair. Uh, no form of justice or reconciliation or truth-telling has been done. Uh, the, 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 victims have, having been, uh, the victims' lives and livelihoods haven't been rebuilt. Uh, no community healing has taken place. And the same uh, fighters or those who have been complicit in the killings are taken back to communities. But what should justice and closure look like for victims of Boko Haram attacks? And how can governments battling insurgent attacks balance supporting victims and reaching out to former fighters? Cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, reaching out to former fighters is fundamental because uh, no uh, insurgency of this kind has ended in the battlefield. It will have to end on the negotiating table. But reaching out to communities is fundamental. And governments would have to do that. And for me, it is a question of putting communities at the very center of any rehabilitation and reintegration program. What that requires in practice includes uh, justice and truth-telling. Unfortunately, at the current moment, all the countries across the Lake Chad region resort to Western-style justice system mm. to prosecute uh, uh, suspected Boko Haram members or associates. And what that ends up with is acquittal. Because these courts uh, rightly require proof beyond reasonable doubt. And most of these crimes took place in the Zambeza forest or in villages where everyone that was an adult was killed and boys and women were kidnapped. And so it is very difficult to get proof beyond reasonable doubt. And it is in our legal system rightly that you cannot convict until you have proof beyond reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. I think the way forward... Of course, at the other side of the coin is that these communities don't understand the systems. The systems, uh, the court systems, are proceedings taking place in English and in French mm -hmm. that are mostly not spoken by local communities. They don't understand the technicalities being employed by lawyers and judges to acquit uh, suspected uh, terrorists. And so you have 
the justice system on the one side that is not relevant to the community. Mm -hmm. On the other side, you have a community that doesn't understand the justice system. Bolama Vukadi, international human rights and security analyst. That's Africa Matters, everyone. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next week.